Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. Uh, today's the Tuesday, May 20 issue of our episode of Nature in Your Backyard. And today I want to bring you some things that I know that you can find. It's uh, been about 50 episodes since uh, the governor of Virginia announced schools are closed. And that's where I started this nature series called Nature in Your Backyard. And I'm in my backyard. And I've just been going out each day and looking to see what can I find. And I wanted to share that with you and tell you the story about some of these neat things that I find. And I want you to go out there and find them too. My episodes are for students, but um, they're really rich in content. And I really want families to go out. So this is something, if you're a student, you should be able to go out and find this today in your backyard or on the edge of a road or on the edge of a park. This is a plant that likes edges. And this is a plant called fleabane. This plant is also known as daisy fleabane. And let's talk about this common name first, daisy fleabane. Well, first of all, it's not actually a daisy, but it kind of looks like one because it has a yellow center and white petals. And the other part of its name is fleabane. And one of the things I love about identifying plants and learning their names is finding out their history. Fleabane was used by people because they thought that it could keep fleas out of their house. So flea, bane, bane is a word that means bad or poisonous or not good. So flea bane is something that would keep fleas out of your house. And I'm thinking, you know, when would fleas be a big problem? Well, back in the days, you know, I got to think of the early settlers. They were living in uh, cabins and they had a lot of animals around and the cabins probably had a dirt floor and the animals probably went in and out because in the summertime they didn't have air conditioners so they probably had their windows and doors open and animals would probably go in and out so finding something that would keep the fleas out was always important i've heard they'd keep bundles of it in the house i've understood that they may have put it in their straw ticks which is a mattress made of stuffed with straw and so if you stuffed a flea bane in there, it would keep the, the bugs out. Another thing, flea bane, was that you could use it on your broom. So people would make their own brooms with twigs and stuff. And if you put the flea bane in with the twigs at the end of your broom, you could use that to sweep out the dirt floor in your house and help keep out the fleas. Now, scientists today aren't so sure that it has chemical properties that actually do keep fleas away. But many plants had a lot of properties that we recognize today. Like the American Indians would choose chew willow bark to keep headaches away. Well, scientists went and did some extracts from willow bark. Then they found a substance called salicylic acid. And salicylic acid is what's in aspirin. So there are a lot of real links to what we would call folk remedies to science today and actually using these chemical compounds in plants. Fleabane had lots of uses. Now, a lot of people look at fleabane and say, oh, that's a weed. Well, you know how I feel about weeds. I've never met a weed that I didn't like, and I don't like calling them weeds. So fleabane, this particular plant, was also used by the Cherokee Indians for a lot of different medicinal reasons. So this is an important plant with a great history. A lot of people think about it as weeds, but I think it's a great plant to keep. And if people ask you if you've got this grown in your yard or in your lawn or on the edge or in your garden and you don't pull it up and people say, hey, how come you don't pull up that weed? You can tell them this isn't a weed. This was an important plant to the Cherokee uh, Indians, uh, the Native Americans that lived in our country before me. And I'm keeping it because it's beautiful and it has this amazing native history. Common name, daisy fleabane, a little confusing because it's not a daisy. Um, it's actually in a, in a group of its own. There's, a lot, there's about seven different species that you can find on the East Coast. The one we have here in Floyd County, which I think you would find be common in Southwest Virginia, I'm pretty sure is, and I have to say the scientific name, and I wrote it down, Erigeron anus. 
But the cool thing about looking up the scientific name is always when you get a name of, of a plant, not only do I want you to Google it and research its history and find out for yourself, but I also want you to just look up its scientific name and see if you can find out what the scientific name means. Well, the name um, Erigeron, the first part of it, Eri, is from the Greek that means woolly. And the last part, Geron, means old man. So the first part of the name means woolly old man. So I'm thinking, do you think that has something to do with old men and white beards and that fine fringe of white that you're going to see on this plant? See if that doesn't make sense to you. And the last part, um, anus, A-N-N-U-S, means yearly. And this is a plant that comes up yearly by seeds. So daisy fleabane, Eric Geron anus. Let's look it at. Let's look at it now, and let's go find it in my backyard. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Never. Uh, and here's to make this invasive. It's exotic. In the front yard, dogwoods are flowering, and I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen, and it's. So here I am in my backyard, and there's my dog, Dee. She's waiting for me so we can go for a walk, as she likes to go for a walk when we find great stuff. And over here, I've got Daisy Fleabane growing. So let's take a look at this, because I want you to be able to recognize this. So here is what really stands out first. This is a Daisy Fleabane flower. And you can see that it has lots of flowers on it. And different from a daisy or aster, it has very, very fine, fine petals on it. And this is a, a composite flower, means it's made up of lots and lots of, of, of little flowers. And if we go back to its name, the scientific name, remember the scientific name, Aragoron, meant woolly old man. So maybe that's why the scientific name is, because these flowers are almost woolly. The leaves, you can see here, are what we call clasping on the stem. They don't have a uh, little stem between this main stem here that I'm holding between my thumb and forefinger and the leaf. You know, a lot of leaves have a little stem on them. And instead, what biologists call this leaf a clasping leaf, and that helps with the identification. So notice that the plant has a variety of, of leaf types. These first ones are called lanceolate-shaped leaves because they're shaped like a lance, which would be like the head of a spear uh, of a knight. And then as you get lower down, they get bigger and bigger. And the basal leaves are very different. Now, so here is a basal leaf. Basal leaves are the leaves right at the base of the plant. And it almost looks like a dandelion leaf. So this is daisy flea mane. You recognize it because of its white, but almost, can you see almost a pinkish tinge to them? Sometimes the, the pink is very, very distinct. Um, you can see that these are pretty tall, and I'll put my, my foot here next to them so you get a little bit of perspective on their height. I've got some more growing back here, and these flowers like to grow on in what are called kind of uh, waste places or roadsides and uh, places where maybe you haven't mowed your lawn recently. Daisy Fleabane. So you guys know I love it when you watch my videos, but I love it more when you go outside and find this on your own. So if you're a student, go outside, look around your backyard, your neighborhood, wherever you are, look for places where um, uh, sometimes against fences, along roadsides, places that haven't been mowed, and you can find it. And better than watching me, I want you to take a photo of it and send me a message and say, Hey, I found it. I got Daisy Fleabane. I've identified it. And share it with me and share it with others. 
So this has been Nature in Your Backyard. Uh, my episode today is on fleabane. And because school's finishing, I want to try to do a lot of things that I know that you can absolutely find today in your backyard, in your neighborhood, or in a local park. So stay tuned. I'm going to be showing you some cool things I know you can find. Yesterday, we talked about millipedes. I know you can find millipedes. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about wild strawberry and a lookalike called Indian strawberry. We'll talk about their history and how strawberries have changed over time as we've got them uh, uh, ready for market and, and we've bred them different ways. So stay tuned. See you later. Bye.